Lord, hold my hand. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41, read in verse 13. Isaiah 41, read in verse 13. Ready, read. For God, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Amen. One more time. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto Fear not. Notice fear not comes for you say. Yes. Fear not. And, and we don't have to be concerned or worried or fearful or full of anxiety because we feel God don't have us. If you are a child of God, God have you. God is holding your hand. And there are times when we might feel as though God has forgotten us. God can't forget us. He said he will forgive us. He will forget our sins. But God don't forget us. There are times we feel weary, uh, weighed down, feel as though things aren't working out, and time is just running past us so quickly. And so we get concerned and we start to worry. Is it working out in my favor? If you are a child of God and if you have faith to believe that, God forgive you for all your sins. And if you was to close your eye now and wake up, you know that you'll wake up in heaven with God. If you are a child of God and you believe in Jesus Christ, you are in the palm of God. You don't have to be afraid of anything in this world. God is holding your hands. And I know there are times when you feel as though, because it happens to me, feel like it's so lucky God where you. Feel like you can't, he ain't, he ain't talking to you. Don't let him be in that point where he ain't talking to you. Or you ain't hearing him. Or feel like as if you asking questions and they're not being answered and you before him and every every day is something else, something come up, something come up, something come up. And if you feel like as though you're drowning sometimes, feel as though as though uh, there's no help. Or every time you turn around look like something working out and then something happened and the bottom fall out. And you feel as though things aren't moving the way it should or you're not happy because of your situation. You feel depressed because of your situation. Know for sure that when God have you, God have you. He is holding your hand. Um, he is your father, meaning that you can come to God with every single thing. There are times when, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, there are times when it feels as though God far away. It feels as though he ain't talking. But times when you ask your parents a question, they don't answer you all the time, eh? But God is be the same, eh, sometimes. Sometimes he don't talk right away. And sometimes he just will see if you're going to respond or how you're going to respond if you're going to exercise his word. A lot of times we go through tests and we feel as though we did something wrong or God don't love us anymore. There is something we did to cause it to happen. Sometimes it's not, that's not the case. Sometimes you're just going through, through tests. Sometimes you're just going through a little situation, it's called a valley. Sometimes it's going to, you're going to feel like it's though you're in a ditch. That happens. But God is still holding your hand. He haven't forgotten. He haven't forgotten. Uh, that means it's time for us to just hunker down and know who you are trusting in. If you say God is your trust, God is your help, God is your father, God is your savior in the good times. When you go into the test, he change. He's still the same. He's still the same. A lot of us think as though we only know God in the good times. Don't just know him in the good times. Know him when it feel like as though he's answering you. In other words, don't turn your back when feel when it feel like as though things aren't working out. Or don't take and um, put your head under the cover, thinking it's gonna go away. It's not gonna go away. A lot of time it's just tests. So when you bring a matter before God and 
you trusted him with that, trust him with it. Don't take it back from him. Don't take it back from him. Situations come up because tests comes up. Tests come our way. We know about Job. Job, greatest fear fall on him. But God delivered him, didn't he? After everything he lost, God never left Job. When Job was asking all of these questions to God, and he was an innocent man, and his friends was just accusing him and saying, man, you had to sin somewhere, something you had to do, something you didn't do what God told you to do. So you had to have been disobedient to God to allow all of this uh, terror to fall on you, all of this where he lost his seven children in one day and where he lost where he seven children or ten children seven seven children and where he lost all of his wealth in one day and where he lost he became a pauper almost overnight and but one thing job did job said the lord give it and the lord take it away blessed be the name of the lord so even though he lost every just about everything he had in one day Job didn't turn his back on God while he was going through the test. He still, he, even though he asked questions, in other words, he was saying, I'm innocent, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. I want to know why God brought this on me, because I am not guilty of this. And his friends was convincing him, look, or was saying to him, you have to sin. But not necessarily. There are times when tests do come. And God had to remind me about that yesterday. Actually, day four yesterday. He had to remind me about that. Um, because I'm so used to whenever I go to God, God answer me right away. And just how I pray, I'm so used to it turning out just how I pray. That on Friday, it didn't turn out the way I prayed. Um, when I say it didn't turn out the way I prayed, it still turned out. But it didn't turn out the way I expected it to turn out. But he never let go of my hand. He was still in the situation. And then yesterday, uh, another situation came up unexpectedly. Um, when it feels as though God has forsaken you, or feel as though God isn't there, God is there. That situation happened, and I go and lie to you. I, I fix it halfway, and I go and sleep because I couldn't take no more. I, said, <laughs> I couldn't row on Friday. I couldn't make some noise yesterday. I said, God, I stopped saying to God, um, God, go with me. I stopped saying that. I say, Father God, your words say you go ahead of me. So... I learn now we got to be careful how we pray because if God is going with me, this is me and God is in my way, we should never be in front of God. No. And so I say, God, I'm with you. Where we going? Where are you taking me today? See, we have to always allow God to lead us because if God have our hands, he have our hands, we don't have his own. He is holding our hands with his right hand of righteousness. So we have to allow God to hold our hands and not let us try to hold his hand. Too much of us want to hold God's hand and pull him where we want to take him. God ain't going where you won't go. And see, that's where our problem lies. Our problem lies with us. We want to take God where we want to go. And if God wants us to go right and he's pulling his hand to take us left, you're going left by yourself. Because one, God ain't open up left for you. God, he never say, let's go left. And so when we pray, Father God, I'm going with you. Let me not go where you don't have me to go. And if you have me to go X, Y, Z, then Father God, go before me. The word of God say, go before me. Make my cricket path straight. So allow God to make the cricket path straight before you get there. Because once you get there, it crooked. Don't go without him. Go with him. In other words, follow God all the time. Follow God. Let God lead you. A lot of us want things and we hear yes, but we never wait for the directions on how to get there. So when we ask God for something, let us wait for the instructions on how to go about getting it. Let us allow God now to continue to lead us 
towards what we are asking for. He will hold us if we let him. God will never be bossy and take over the show if we don't give it to him. A lot of us are holding on to it when we should have surrendered the reins to him a long time ago. We want to be in charge. Stop being in charge. Be the child for once. Be God's child. And when I say be a child, the word of God says, except you become as little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because we've been molded so much into form and, and to act like the world and to look like the world and to shape like the world and to talk like the world and to be like the world. The world belongs to Satan. God calls Satan the God of this world. So we have to now be transformed up here. So we have to allow the word of God to transform this and transform this. Because once these are transformed, we are following God's principles, his laws, his precepts, his commandments. When we allow God to lead, and we let him hold our hands, you can't go wrong. So when the water starts to come up, even though it might come through our, up to our necks, uh, God is still leading us. So we should still be, we should still be um, confident that we will not drown. We should still have that confidence in God that we will not drown. And not to look around at the water. Because if you're in the front, you see everything in the front. You see the water come in. But if God is in front of you, you got your eyes on God. Mm -hmm. So you don't see when the storm comes. You feel it, but you don't, feel, you don't see it. And when we start to look through nat natural eyes, then fear comes. Fear will come. If you, are, if you are not grounded in God, deeply grounded in God enough, um, fear will pull you out of God. Fear will cause you to stop what he tells you to do and go back into that comfort zone. But if God is holding your hand, get out of the comfort zone. Do what he has called you to do and don't be, don't be afraid. We are, as children of God, we walk in fear. We have to stop that. The word of God says the fearful will not inherit the kingdom of God. The fearful will not inherit the kingdom of God. We cannot allow fear to bombard our minds, to stop us, to delay us. Because we speak and act out of fear a lot of times if we are not grounded and rooted in the word of God. Fear will jump on us and overtake us. Don't allow fear to get into your heart and your mind to cause you now to just stop trusting in the word of God and stop trusting in God. Cannot allow that to happen. If God says he's going to hold your right, your hand and he's holding it with his righteous hand, nothing can come on you. Nothing can overtake you. So we don't have to be fearful. Too many of us are allowing our situations to speak to us far louder than we listen to the word of God. Do not be afraid. Live. We got to live. Live. A lot of us are working. We work that hard. And we are, we are almost slaves to our jobs because we are so efficient. And I'm not saying you're not supposed to be efficient. Yes, you're supposed to be efficient. But we have to know when it is to take a break. Take a break and, and trust God. If he tell you to take $100 and do something different, trust him with $100, do something different. A lot of us allow our, our money situation to stop us from enjoying life. Don't do that. If he brought the $1,000, you don't think he'd bring another 1000 He can bring the next 1000 if we brought the hundred, you think he could bring two hundred? Oh, <clears throat> Lord, I have to wait ten years before I can see this this uh, vacation. Father, I'm looking at this, and this don't look good for opening up a business. Father, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I had a hundred dollars on this account. I see two dollars. I don't even know where to go. <laughs> Father, I sure. I sure I put $500 in the gun. 
I'll get down the one hundred dollars. You know how we depend on us. We depend on us. When I tell you, I had some situations come up. Only God get me out of them situations. I kid you not. When God tell me, look here, just give the money. I say, God, I can't just give the money. <laughs> I can't just give the money. I have this, this, and this, and I have to make sure. Put something here, put something here, put something here. I said, if something happens, leave, and then I can go here. God is saying, give the money. I said, God, I can't just give the money. And we be back and forth like this, you know. God, I can't say because your mind, your eyes, you seeing, if you don't do this, they can turn this off. If you don't do this, they can turn that off. If you don't, how you get to wait because you need to put gas in the car. If you don't do this, if you don't do this, but guess what? If you don't do it, you're going to die. Amen. And so God is trying to tell me, he said, just do it this way. I was like, Father, why have to do it this way? And he's like, because I tell you. I said, well, that's good enough for me. <laughs> but I've, I had to get there. I had to get there because no matter how much money I put in the bank, God still finds something to use it on. <laughs> so I might say use it on me, when he tell me to use it on me. Because when he tell me to go, go here and go there, I said, hmm, that ain't God. That's Satan trying to cause me to use my money. So I leave the money in the bank. And so God, I, and I show, he said, okay, well, since you don't want to trust me because you got a little something in the bank, I want you to do such and such and such. I was like, but God, I can't do that. Because I don't know. I don't know if I can need this money. Let me tell you something. If you plan for sickness, sickness can come here. That's right. If you plan, if you plan for emergencies, emergencies can come. That's right. So what you planning from for? That's right. That's right. So the little nest egg I had in the bank, because why? I trusted in me. God pulled it all out. It was in a minor side of the bank. I was like, God, this how this happened? He say, I was like, how I get him? Then forget night and do what he tell me to do. I said, how oh, I get, how oh, I get here, Lord? And I, cause I know I am always careful of what things I do. And he's like, you, it ain't you who get you there. And then I say, that's right, God, I get me here. I said, God, that's you, that's you, God, that's you. This you get me here, God. This ain't me, I said, that's right, because you tell me to do such and such. And now, God, I had a minus, I said, God, you, that's you. You think God, God ain't change, God ain't say nothing, God ain't, I, I sure he didn't ruffle a feather like they say. All he says is that you won't get you there. So God had to teach me how to live life without a dollar in the bank. How to live life without a dollar in my wallet. And I got but two wallets and I got a bag. <laughs> and ain't nothing in the wallet, ain't nothing in the bag. And I learned how to live, I learned how to trust God without a dollar. And I was like, God, I'm not used to this. But you know what he was teaching me? How to trust him. How to allow him to take my hand and follow him. How to give him my hand and stop pulling his hand. Because I can pull all I want, but he ain't moving. He ain't moving unless it's the direction he tells me to go. Our problem is we want to be the parent. And we want daddy, to, daddy God just to be the sugar daddy, the provider. And just say, come and go and give our, our command. It don't work like that. God don't take orders from nobody. So we have to bring our faith up and our trust up to when he tell you to move, just move. If you don't have a penny, just move. When he tell me to go and put, it, put the program on the radio, I say, okay, that's a good idea. And when they tell me the money, and the woman said the money have to be in before the program going there. I was like, when she talking to me, she how much money you bring? But she ain't never tell me bring no money. So I, I had some money, but it wasn't all the money. And I was like, now nah, God, you know, I was saying to myself, why is she talking? I try to have a conversation with God. I said, now God, you tell me do this, you know, Father. You don't tell me, you need all this money up. But she said, I never asked God. I trusted him to know that if he tell me to go, he already made provision for me. And let me tell you something. The day that he tell us to put it on the air, it was on the air and was paid in full for entire month. So when you think you don't have nothing, you have everything in God. So we have to learn to trust God when he say to follow him, follow him. Follow him means that we do what he tell us to do. Um, 
and only do what he tell us to do. Take your will and give it to him and let him give you his will because his will is far better than our will could ever be. Our will will interfere with our destinies. God have already predestined us, meaning that he have already made a plan for your life and for my life. So for the next 10 years, 50 years, if we're still here, he have every day planned out. So if God have every day planned out, let us hold his hand so that we can enjoy the, the rest of the years that we have holding his hand and following him. Don't get upset when things aren't working out. A lot of times, some things don't work out in our favor for a reason. Because the word of God says, all things work together for good. For them that love the Lord and are called according to what? His purpose. Whose purpose? God's purpose, not our purpose. So we, we, we as children of God and, and human in general, we tend to get this mix up. Let us allow God to lead us. Hold his hand all the time. I get to the point now, God, I say, just hold my hand. I, I close my eye and all. Just hold my hand. I can just follow. Because if you follow God and your eyes are on God, then you should not see anything other than God in front of you. And meaning that if God have already established the plans you set uh, or give to him and he already set for you, then it should work out. It should work out. When, you, when he give you something, don't change it. I learned to stop changing things. When you come to God with a plan, let's say you want to go away, and you already give him the dates, and he said, okay, you can go. Uh, let's say he give you June 30th to, to, to July 7th. And so that's a month, almost a month away. Well, no, two weeks or so away. And he already said yes to it. Don't let your mind now go and say, okay, I got to have at least two paychecks, three paychecks by then. So I could buy the ticket, I could get the car, I could rent. Don't do that. See, because I'm mine down there. Because guess what? You ain't gonna never have enough shopping money. That's right. So if he already say yes to that, then now what you do? You say, Father, can you please buy the tickets, pay for the meals, pay for my entertainment, pay for the car, pay for the hotel, please? Because if he or if he authorized the trip, won't he authorize it? Everything you need on the trip. Okay. So why are we letting our mind go on how our paycheck gonna pay for it? <laughs> so don't don't mix it up. Follow God all the way through. Now that you already asked permission to go on a vacation or take a trip for a week, allow God now to furnish it. Don't you now go back in your mind, carnal mind, carnal self, and try to figure out if you have enough in the bank, if your paycheck gonna suffice, because it ain't gonna never suffice when you go over there and you see the sales, your money gonna run out if you don't it yourself. So now you say, Father, I thank you for the hotel, the car, the meals. The entertainment. Don't forget entertainment. You gotta entertain yourself. You're on vacation, man. Yes. A lot of a lot of Bahamians don't know how it is to vacation. They just go and shop and they spend all their money and they go set up to go away for a week, two weeks. And they done spend their money in two days and they're ready to come back home. That ain't no vacation. That was a shopping trip for two days. All the money run out, oh I ready to go home. You ain't ready to go home, you got more money. <laughs> The money run out, so you're ready to go home. So no, don't, don't do that because see, that, that's what's going to happen. So trust God with the whole vacation. Allow him now to take care of everything. Don't you now take his hand and try to take him to the left because you are doing with what's left in, what's in your hands or in your pockets. No, let him continue to hold your hand all the way through until the 30th of June all the way through until the end of the vacation. So plan your vacation, people. A lot of us plan only when we have it. 
That's the wrong time to plan because Satan will always use that money for something. Or God can tell you to give it to somebody. So bring your plans to God and ask for directions on how to get there. And allow him to lead you there. That's where we go wrong. We want to take it over after we just hear yes. And we go back in self-mode and stop trusting in God to get us all the way there. Don't do it. You ain't gonna never have sufficient money. Never. So when I went on vacation, because I was like, God, can I have a vacation, please? He said, yes. I said, and I asked him for everything. And we went to the zoo on one day. We went to Zoo Miami uh, on one day. We show up for two days. We had a day f- for the boat, because he put some stuff on the boat. And asked where the money come from. We have to learn to trust God. But we have to have that, that unshakable faith. We have to have that awareness that when we speak to God and he answers, we have to have that awareness and that assurity that he can't lie. Because truly God cannot lie. So if he already said yes, he said yes knowing that it already happened. See, we, we look at it from it happening or it's about to happen. God sees it as it already finished. So we have to now get our minds to seeing things already finish. You go to God for a house, you already presented the plans to God. Allow him to finish it. He might just have you to thank him for it. Just keep thanking him for it. If you go to God and say you want a new car, then thank him for bringing him the car. He would instruct you on what to do to get this car. But until he give you further instructions, Every day, you think about your car that come across your mind. Don't think, oh, I got to go to the bank. Oh, I got to save another f- five, six months. No, don't, don't see that. See yourself in your car, driving your car, and giving God thanks for your car. See yourself in your house and thanking God for a beautiful home. See, it's, it's in here. Because if God owns everything and it's his own to give to whom he chooses, why aren't we in that, that, that count? Who you choose. So don't allow your faith now to cause you not to get what God has for you. Thank Him. If you're in a job um, and you, you don't want to be there any longer or you feel it's not moving, then keep, start thanking Him for movement. Father God, I thank you for promotion. Father God, I thank you for a brand new job. But you do this every single day. Every single day. And let me tell you something. Every time you say that, 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 that declaration that you are speaking, it becomes stronger in here and in here. The means that your faith now is growing more and more and more to where one day you're going to see it manifest. But you have to keep speaking it because what you're doing, you are speaking life to a situation. So when God gives the answer, don't turn around the answer. Turn the answer around to be negative. But to hold on to that. Hold on to that and do not change your plans. Don't change your plans. I, I, every time I change plans, something go wrong. So God had to teach me when I, there's something I wanted to do and I was going to say, oh, I can change it. God said, no. I said, why? He said, because you already present that to me. I already said, yes, I already approve it. And he said, if you change it now, you are changing this is something different in other words. So don't change what you give, what, what God already authorized. Don't change it. In other words, if God is holding your hands in a situation, let him keep holding your hands until that situation has worked itself out. Stop changing your mind. That's changing your plans. Be with one mindset all the time. If you know your heart's desire is for something and it is something good, give God his word. No good thing will he withhold from you. Stop changing it because you change it out of fear or out of what you see. We're not changing it because um, we believe God can't do it. Fear causes us to change it. Fear causes us to change it. Stop changing your mind because of fear. Behind fear, God have us. So allow God to hold your hand through that situation 
and he will see you through it. But when you want to take it over yourself, look here, you'll be forever trying to get that situation. You'll be forever trying to make that happen for you. Plenty of years, my little guy wanted to take vacation um, for years. I think it might, might have been maybe two, three years. I didn't even go away. Because every time you turn around, the money go to something else. Man, I started to trust God, look here. It went back to how it used to be. One time I used to go away. I used to be away every week. On my two days off, I hop on the plane and just go. That's before I had real responsibility. I, I went away, look here, there was... I use a passport, look here. The passport never lasted me 10 years because there was no more space to, 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 to stop it. Every, every week I was off, I was on the plane. Every week I was on the plane. So, so when you get responsibility and you still like going, just carry your responsibility with you. My responsibility. <laughs> I took my responsibility with me. And, and we went on the plane. And, and, but what I'm saying is that get to the place just how you trust you, trust God. Because I trusted me way back then. Every, every week I was on the plane. I trusted me. I trusted me because I had no responsibility. So why can't I trust God with responsibility? You see, it's our mind, people. It's our mind. Before COVID, plenty of went away. So COVID now, nobody going, ain't nobody going to go away. Why? Fair. Fair stopping a lot of people and the fact that they think they don't have any money. But they don't, just what we do here, they don't over there. So don't allow fair to stop you from enjoying life. Don't allow fair to stop you from getting all that God has for you. But most of all, you have to allow God to hold your hand. Don't think you could pull him here, then everywhere. God isn't moved by, by your feelings, your thoughts. You come to him for directions. You come to him and say, Father, what you think about this? Father God, I would love to do this. But don't never move without God. And when you move, you follow. You follow. Put God in front of you with everything you touch. Put God in front of you. If you desire, if you desire um, whatever it is you desire, you know what it is you're going to God for. Give it to God and trust him with it. But don't take it from him. Don't allow fail to cause you to take it from him. If something isn't working out, go to God. Okay, God, why isn't it working out? I already brought this to you. Why is it I don't see it coming together? Because on Friday I start the question, but God, I, I know I, I prayed and I, you gave me permission. I said, so why this happen? And he said, and I was saying, I didn't, I, if there's any sin, show me. If I did anything, show me. And you know, over ever so gently said, not all the time you did something wrong. Sometimes it's just a task. So go through the task. You might be going through a task or you might be doing something wrong. But you won't know if you don't go to God and ask questions. I ask about everything. Everything I ask about. And the things I don't ask about, I'm sorry I ask about it. The smallest little things could mess you up. So I learned to get permission from God. I, I see God as my father. I see him as my friend. I see him as my best friend. I talk to God so much, man. I clear. I've been that car having a ball. I say, people looking at me, looking around, to see you in this car. What do you mean, God? I have a good time with God. I trust him. I trust God more than I trust any human being. I trust God more than I trust myself. That's the relationship I have with him. So when he tell me go, I go in. When he tell me stop, I stop in. But we have to build that friendship and that relationship with God that when we give him something, we know that it is finished. When he talk to me, I, I finish. So allow God to hold your hand. Don't try to hold his hand and pull him where you want him to go. It's not going to work. Allow God to hold your hand and then let him lead you. But give him everything. I watch God. When you, when you, when you learn to speak life over your life, Satan going to bring people everywhere you encounter. They're going to try to speak some kind of death over you. Because you ain't speaking it. And I, I learn to listen even more attentively to what people say. Small little things people say. And I learn to say, oh no. Mm -mm, Satan, you ain't getting. Mm -mm. 
I cancel it. I cancel it. I cancel it. And they don't even know what they're saying. Do not come into agreement with Satan negative words over you. Do not come into agreement with negative um, um, words. Speak life. And if anybody speak negativity over you, make sure I shut it down. Make sure I shut it down because if you don't, silence may consent. You are coming into agreement. Oh, when you gonna get this? Why you why you so why your head so hard? Why you can't understand? Don't let nobody tell you them saying them kind of things. Oh, you ain't never have no money. Even if you ain't got no money, say I rebuke that. My storehouse is filled. You speak life. Oh, why you always broke? Every time I ask you for a dollar, you ain't never have a dollar. But why you can't give me a dollar? <laughs> Since I don't have a dollar when you ask me for a dollar, why don't you give me a dollar so when you ask me, I have a dollar? Yes, but it, what it is is Satan using people now to speak brokenness over you. To speak brokenness over you. Oh, I ain't got no money. Why? Because you, no you don't want to lend nobody the money that you have allotted for something. So you say, oh, I don't have no money. Satan, Satan set up. And so what happened? The money you have, gone. I learned to stop. Don't, in other words, keep your mouth closed. And rebuke everything if, it ain't, if you ain't sure, rebuke it. Shut it down. Say, God, if it's not of you, I shut it down. I'm, I'm not coming into agreement because Satan will stop you. And he will stop you dead. Be careful of the words you use. Speak. Rather not speak than to speak dead. Rather not speak than to speak and hold up your destiny. Don't speak depressive. Satan bring a spirit of depression your way and you just happen to buy in on it for a day or two. Do not say, oh, I depress. Oh, I depress. Oh, I depress. Why are you depressed? You got life. You got strength. You could run. You got people who give everything they got to run again or just to run for the first time. So we, it's how we look at things. If you learn to allow God to lead you and just allow God to hold your hand, no matter what test you go through, it won't be so bad. But when we want to start talking about what we're going through, we big it up, we inflate it. We inflate it. If who you talking your problems to can't pray with you, can't hold your hand and pray with you, then don't talk it to them. Because all they can do is cause it to be bigger than it was. So we have to learn how to allow God to hold our hands through every situation, through everything. Allow God to lead us and just follow hard after him. You don't have to know where God taking you. Just know that he's taking you. Amen. A lot of us, we follow people. Like it's, I can come to Rochelle, come go with me. But because Rochelle know my character, she can say, okay, I got it. She ain't gonna answer me. But some of us follow people who we don't even know. You ever get inside a long line and you, you, you toe on the line, you can't see what's going on the front end. They start to move, so you move. They move, you move. But you know you here for something. I mean, you get to the front, you toe the, long, the wrong line. <laughs> that ever happened to you? That just happened to you. Because you see a bunch of people going, you know you come in here. And you come here for a service. And then you get to the front, oh, sweetie, that's the line over there. Two people in front of you. Or none in front of you. But you told a line all along. So we have to not, uh, don't let people lead you down the wrong track. Allow God to hold your hand, allow God to lead you. God, this is the right line for me. This is the right line for me. Mm-hmm. You gotta ask questions. We have to. Don't just assume you are on the right road because you are a child of God. There are a lot of Christians that are on the wrong road and look here, they catching hell. And every day, it's gonna be a better day. And this 20 years, 15 years later, and every day going to be a better day. And some die waiting on this better day. Some die waiting on the promises of God to manifest in their lives. Don't die waiting on the promises of God. Because he never tell us to wait for the promises. His promises are yes and amen. Amen means so let it be. He never says promises are five years down the road. Two years down the road. But that's where we put it. We put it there. Why you want to put it so far down the road? If you want a vacation, why wait till December? Why you can't go tomorrow? Because why our mind taking us by December, I have a thousand dollars saved so I can go away. See, we have to get out of that mindset of trusting self. 
Self only going to set you up for curses. Trusting in self and only put curses on your own head. And I have to get out of that. If you trust God, let him hold your hand all the way. Every single day. Let God hold your hand. Let him hold your hand. Because if God is holding your hand, you cannot fail in life. You cannot buck up in life. You cannot drop in a ditch you didn't see. Because God is holding your hand. I mean, you're following God. So we have to get our minds uh, to a place where we rest and trust God 100%. 100% of the time. We cannot allow self to run the show no time. Because of self running the show, self is flesh. Flesh is not saved. Self flesh is sinful. Flesh cannot please God. Your spirit man pleases God. So we have to allow God to lead us in our situations. Just give it to him. I get the point. Say, Father, I can't take this. Just, I give it to him. And I move on to something else. But when I give it to him, I mean, I trust him with that. I trust him with that. I tell you, this is the, I, when we went away, let me tell you something. When I say, when, when we pray and we say, God, stretch me or use me, he going to stretch you like this. You might think he's going this much. No. Your mm -hmm. mind to stretch, this must be right here. God mind to stretch is way out here. And so you're going to feel that stretching. Right before we were ready to go away because I had to pay for the car. Now, I used to pay it in Miami, in Florida, especially in Miami, or, or Fort Lauderdale, or even a little further up. Car, if you get a small car, well, you're going to pay like 30 something dollars a day for that car. So, and, and if you go for a week, you pay even less for the car. But let me tell you something, I got a small car. It wasn't a real small car, but it's a small car. It was a low car, because look here. It was a low car. But it was a small car. I spent $549 for that car. I was like, God, I ain't going to this vacation. I said, this is too much money. It cost more than the hotel. That's the first time I paid for a car was more than a hotel. And the hotel was in cheap because every place, everything was booked out. So I was like, God, you sure you're going to get on this vacation? Because I was like, ah, I, I put this off. I said, See, I already look at the money. But I ready to ask God for vacation, ready to approve the dates. So I said, Father, I know if I got on this vacation. Um, a couple of days later, I said, I know. I said, the car, the hotels are already expensive. So one day I'm praying with God, God say, so who paying for the car? I say, you paying for the car. He say, so why are you looking at the price? I was like, God, you always get me for this. God always get me with this because why? I say I trust him, but I still looking at the money. He say you go on your vacation, don't change your thing. I said, but God, the car's five fifty. He said, go on a vacation. I said, all right. So I went on vacation, car for five fifty, and the hotel and before we got there, everything was paid. See, when we learn to trust God and truly trust God and just move, and He say move and don't change it to fit in your little box. <clears throat> let me tell you something. Your relationship with God will skyrocket because your faith is going to shoot up. And we still had money to do what we had to do. We got money while we was there. So God can get money to you wherever you go. You don't have to carry money on vacation if you don't want to. God can meet you there with the money. But when you're going on your own, you better have money in your pocket. You better have money on the credit card. Carry a credit card. You know, you just carry no debit card. Because the debit card ain't, ain't, ain't going to last. So when we say we trust God, trust God. Don't look at nothing other than what God tell you to do. So when you give God something, give it to God and leave it there. A lot of us say we leave our children in God's hands. But yet we beat them up and every, t every time they do something wrong, we jump down their throat. So if you leave them children with God, leave them children with God. And some of us, we think our, our parents... Um, out of the time, we think they, they outdated, but our parents are so wise if we would give them half the chance. Amen. You children, you, you guys in here who still are, uh, thank God for us, who still have parents on this earth, treasure them. Yes. Don't make them your God, but treasure them. Because one day they ain't going to be here, and then you're going you're gonna to want to jump down to that same grave. You want to jump in the court casket with them because they're gone. Treasure these parents we have. Children, 
cherish these parents. Satan is going to try to bring situations to cause you to run hard for them. Don't allow Satan to cause separation between you and your parents or parent. Do not allow Satan to jump on you. And parents, don't allow Satan to jump on you when it comes to these children. We drive some of them too hard. We don't want to listen to them. And we are always right and sometimes we are wrong. Some place we was going, we was going to do something. Ah, we was going up on 103 and I wanted to try a different route. So she and I said, let's go on the route we usually go. I said, man, I want to try a different route. But let me tell you something, that route we take was an accident. I said, man, this ain't supposed to be moving like this. Man. This time I look at her and trying to see what's happening. She and I, I know she got her eye like, no. <laughs> But she gets sweet, you know, she's sweet. So she ain't never say a word. So we finally, I say, that's had to be an accident up here. That was an accident. And so instead of trying to get up there faster, I lost my but I will go in a different route. So she may say, I used to be right sometimes. I said, yeah, I said, I said, man, you used to be right a lot of times. It ain't take nothing off for me to say, yeah, you was right. Parents, listen to me. Let your children know if you're wrong, say you're wrong and say, look, I'm wrong. I apologize. I'm sorry. A lot of us think our children know our feelings. They have feelings. They have feelings. Appreciate them. One day they go on at your house and then you could be pining for them and they could give you a light of day. Have that relationship now while they're under your roof. Build that relationship with your children. Children, while you are still under your parents' roof, Honor these parents so that your days may be good and long on this earth. That you have a good life. Honor these parents that God has given to you. They might be the best, but I can tell you one thing. They're yours. And one day, to you, but you can't see it now. You can say, I had the best mom growing up. I had the best dad growing up. You can't see it now, but one day you're going to see it. Father, we give you thanks for your word, God. Teach us how to allow you to lead us, oh God. Father, we repent for taking your hand and wanting to drag you where we want to take you. Lord, forgive us, Father God. Teach us, oh God, how to follow you, how to allow you to hold, how to allow you to hold our hands with your right hand of righteousness, Father God. Father God, that you will help us, oh God. Teach us, oh God, to wait on your help, Father God, and most of all, to ask you for help, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, teach us, oh God, that when we give you a situation, when we come to you with any problem or any concerns, any matters, that we wait for the answer, and when you give us the answer, we wait for directions. And until we get a direction, we praise you and thank you until we see the manifestation. Father God, teach us, oh God, how not to trust in self, how to take self and put before you, Father God, it is out of error, it is sin, Father God. For you said we must have no other gods beside you. And when we do that, we make ourselves our own God. When we put our parents before you, we make our parents our own God. When we put anything, our jobs before you, make our jobs our gods. And Lord, you say it is sin. And Lord, forgive us all who have done that. All of us who have erred, all of us who have sinned, Lord, we repent even now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Wash and cleanse us in the blood of Jesus Christ, Father God. Make us whiter than snow, Father God. Lord, as we say we're going to follow you, let us do what we say. Let us allow you to lead us as we follow you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Doing what you say do and only do what you say do, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And only speak what you have us to speak. I bind that spirit of fear off of us. I bind the spirit of depression off of us. God, they are not of you. And Father God, I bind them off of everyone in here. Father God, I cast them out in the name of Jesus. And God, give us your spirit of joy and peace, Father God. That surpass it all understanding, Father God. Let it be in our homes, Father God. And our workplace and our jobs, Father God. Continue, Father God, to bless the entrepreneurs in here, the business owners, Father God. Continue to bless our bosses, who we have bosses, Father God. Bless their businesses, Father God. As they increase, God, allow them to increase us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you, Father God, for truly your promises are yes and amen. Lord, as we already cast all of our cares on you, we thank you for going before us throughout this week, Father God truly making the cricket path straight and the wrong right 
teaching us, oh God, how to truly go through the flood, but go through following you and you alone, mighty God. For truly tests come to make us stronger, not to kill us, but to God to get us to where you need us to be. And Lord, every destiny, Father God, in here, or who might listen to this, and that might be caged by Satan, Father God, I ask you, Father God, to loose and set our destinies free. Father God, put us back on track, Father God. Get us back in the right alignment, Father God, in the name of Jesus. For all of us who have been disobedient to our parents, Father God, we repent, forgive us. Father God, for your words, we must honor our parents that our days may be long on the face of the earth. Father God, we, for, we repent right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, teach us, oh God, how to love our children, Father God, the way we should love our children, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Teach us, oh God, how to love one another, how to love our neighbors, ourselves, how to love you, Father God, most of all. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for all of our soul, minds, and strength, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and heart. Father God, throughout this week, Father God, we thank you for making a way in the desert. Father God, if there's any brass heaven above our heads, if there's any iron ground beneath our feet, Lord, I ask you to remove them. Father God, in the name of Jesus and God, let your rain and your snow come down on us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for filling our storehouses, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for giving us houses, Father God, that we didn't build, Father God, and filling them with good things, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for the vacations coming up. Thank you, Father God, for everyone who's come before you for their spouse. Father God, we thank you for their for spouses, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Watch over them, keep them wherever they are, Father God, until you bring us together or them together, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And I bind the spirit of hindrance off of them that Satan will not de 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 delay, Father God, the marriages, Father God, in here any longer. And the ones who are will hear this, Father God, if Satan is trying to delay any marriage, Father God, in here or anyone's uh, future plans, Father Father God, I bind him and I cast him off of us and off of everyone in here, Father God. And Lord, open the right doors, Father God, for us to advance us for opportunities, for greater opportunities. But most of all, Father God, let what we run in after, let it be your will for our lives. Let it be the destiny, Father God, that you have given to us from before the foundation of the world in Christ Jesus. Let us run after you with everything in us, Father God. Let us trust you, Father God, because Father God, if we trust self, we know that we put a curse on our head and God, we refuse to continue to put curses on ourselves, Father God. But teach us, oh God, Father God, how to stand in you, Father God. How to live and move and have our existence, our being in you, Father God. In the name of Jesus and Father God, we thank you, Father God, for being our God, our Father, our Redeemer, our Sustainer, Father God, our solid rock, Father God, Jesus Christ. Thank you for our Holy Spirit, our comforter. Thank you who lead us and teach us and, and bring back your words to our remembrance, Father God. Teach us, oh God, how to be a doer of your word, how to stand on your word, how to trust you, Father God, how to trust your word, like how we trust ourselves, like how we trust our paycheck, like how we trust, Father God, things. Teach us how to trust you even greater than that, Father God. Let us not put our trust and hope in man, but put our trust and faith and trust in you, Father God, and you alone, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Everything Father God, every matter, Father God, that may have anyone way down in here, Father God, I break it in the name of Jesus. I break it with the name of Jesus. And God, I say, loose them and set them free, Father God. And I thank you for the right open doors, Father God, this week, Father God, remain of this month for your children everywhere, Father God, throughout the world, Father God. Let us see you, Father God, as we ask you for your help within this week, Father God. Thank you also, Father God, for delivering us from all evil, Father God. And Lord, as we go throughout this week, Father God, continue to show us what you have us to do, Father God. Who, who you have to meet us, Father God, let our paths meet, Father God. And that you would get the glory out of it. And Father God, we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Questions before we go?